Well, joining me now is environmental campaigner Donica McCarthy, Just Stop Oil spokesperson uh, Chloe Naldret, and the former England uh, Test cricket legend Sir Geoffrey Boycott. So, welcome to all of you. Uh, well, you. let me start with Chloe, Chloe Naldret. Uh, Chloe, even the people who were funding you, even the millionaires behind a lot of this stuff, they're sick of it. They're sick of the performative stuff, the attention seeking, the wrecking of stuff that other people enjoy. They recognise none of it is turning anyone's opinion. Uh, they're as sick of it as I am. Why do you all keep doing this? Well, thanks for having me on today, Pierce. Um, what you've just done, beautiful summary of the actions that we've been doing over the last year, of course, has looked a lot at how we protest, but you haven't mentioned a word about why. Why is it that a bunch of really ordinary, community-minded, uh, law-abiding people are taking this kind of action? And the answer is because we're in a climate emergency and our government is not taking it seriously. This action at Lords today isn't the biggest climate story of the day. The biggest climate story of the day is the fact that the government's own climate change committee, which is headed by the Conservative peer Lord Devon, has found that the government's net zero strategy is failing on every single one of its targets. That means they're not keeping us safe now and they Great. are not so you keeping know what, us Chloe, safe in the future. You know what, come on shows like this and debate that. I'll invite you on to have a proper debate uh, about uh, that. Invite us on, my message we'll to you, come on any time, but, but my the message reality to you is, is the listen, only way we get on is by your, doing these no, actions. No, it's not the only way you get on. That's a complete myth. There have been regular debates on shows like mine that don't involve a reaction to the kind of ridiculous nonsense we saw today. The truth is, you've become a group of wreckers. You just like wrecking things for the sake of wrecking. Nobody is coming along why to your cause because of these stupid stunts. Pierce. We all think you're a bunch of puerile spoilt brats who are just going out of their way to cause other people inconvenience and ruin their fun. That is the reality. Well, you might well have serious... Well, hang on, let me finish. You might well... Opinion. Hang on. You might well have a serious point to make or many serious points to make. I might well agree with some of those points. I probably do. But you know what? The more of these things you do are things that I enjoy and my friends enjoy and my family enjoys and other people with their friends and families enjoy, the more families that you stop in getting to work or getting their kids to school for important exams or getting to funerals or whatever it may be, the more you do that, the more we hate you and the more we don't want to have anything to do with you or give you a platform to talk about the stuff that actually is more important, as you rightly say. Why don't you just stop the stupid stunts? Stop wrecking because people's this won't get, lives. This won't stay in the news and it won't stay in the conversation. And perhaps what we're doing by interrupting the things that you need to do that are important to you, that you love, is we're making you think about everything that no, we're standing No, you're not. You're lose. making me think you're a Lord bunch De of morons. Lord Debon said today... You're not, Chloe. Lord Debon said Chloe, today... Chloe, you're not making me think about your cause. Now, Nobody at Lords well, today was thinking, God, think you know what? It, this Pierce. is about climate change. We saw the orange powder, the whole crowd started booing, and fortunately... England's wicket keeper, Johnny Are you Bairstow. Are going to let me talk? Uh, actually, no, I'm going to cut you, you off. I'm going to, go to, I'm going to go to Sir Geoffrey Boycott. Geoffrey, um, you're a cricket yes, legend. Yes, yes. You know, I remember back in the 70s, a pitch being dug up at Headingley, uh, which wrecked a, a test mm. match in a different kind of protest. But this, this series of attacks on stuff that most Britons just like watching, the snooker, the cricket, the Chelsea Flower Show... What do you make of it? Does it convince you that you should take this kind of thing seriously? No, I watched it today and I just started laughing. I thought the England players did well and with the Aussie batsmen, they made a barrier at one end for one of them so they couldn't get through and then the, uh, the staff came on and grabbed him One rugby tackled him. Johnny picked up the other one and the orange powder, it actually went on the ground about eight or nine, ten yards away from the pitch. Yeah. So it didn't do any damage whatsoever. And I just laughed. I thought it was foolish. I, I just thought it was stupid. There's a serious point to this, uh, Geoffrey, which is that had they actually got to the wicket itself, you know, these wickets yeah. in a test match at Lords on day one of a five-day match, yep. they're pretty sacred pieces of land, right? If they got there and begun to do actual damage to the wicket, sprayed their paint everywhere, actually it could have wrecked the entire test match. Yes, and everybody's got tickets for tomorrow, Saturday, whatever, whatever day. All the refunding, their, their absolute few days of the cricket would be spoiled. That's what happened with the George Davies. That's what it was in 75. 
it was uh, some people who got in through the night. They didn't have security guards then or, or dogs, you know, through the night to stop that. And they dug up the pitch and they painted it. And it was all about freeing George Davis, yeah. who was in jail at the time. They supposedly thought he was wrongly put in jail. Uh, and when Tony Gregg and Ian Chappell, the two captains, were walking up, come to the ground early because there's been a problem, Greggy was smart enough to say to Ian Chappell, can we cut a fresh pitch for you and we play on that? Chappell yeah. said, whoa, we're not stupid. Because as you know, and any cricket lover mm. knows, these pitches that they actually bat on have been prepared and rolled and made flat and pancake so that you get a fairly true bounce. If you play on a freshly mown pitch, the ball zips all over of the course. place and Australia would have lost. So the, whole so the match was abandoned. Yeah, that's right, it was. And, and the whole... In the whole integrity of an of a international cricket match, say the Ashes like this, is reliant on the pitch and the integrity of that pitch. That's yes. why it may look yes. like a puerile stunt. Actually, if they got to where they were trying to get to, and who knows what they had planned for when they got on the wicket, they could have wrecked the Lord's Test match. And I come back again, Geoffrey, to this sense that I have that the British public are not getting moved one iota to support no, this cause, the more that they do this kind of thing to stuff that we all enjoy. Well, if they'd have got to the pitch and ruined it in some way, then there might have been hell on. They might not have got out of the ground in one piece. That's not to say that's right, but people would have been angry that the game was ruined and ruined for the next few days. I mean, this is an ashes. There isn't anything bigger in cricket and there isn't a ground better in the world than Lords, the mecca of cricket. Yeah. So it wouldn't have gone down well, and I felt at the time, that's why I laughed, I thought, this is silly. This is negative. This is not going to do you any good mm. because the people are across. They're going to be mad as hell if you ruin it. I completely agree. Um, let me come to you then, uh, Donald. I've always felt you're a more reasonable talker about this kind of thing. I know you've had a you know, long-time commitment to it. I want to read you again what Trevor Nielsen said to the Sunday Times at the weekend, because it was really interesting. He said, I absolutely believe this kind of thing has become now counterproductive. I just feel like it has to be said by somebody that was involved in the beginning of what it's become. This is going to require an immensely difficult navigation of the middle, and the activists are ostracising the exact people they need to engage. They're creating an excuse for people to stay on the sidelines. Blocking bridges is a lot easier than building bridges. And that is what we need to do if we're going to succeed. Now, I read that and I, I thought, good on you. Good on you for not being intransigent. Good on you for recognising what I've been saying repeatedly and others, which is it's not the cause itself that is causing all the friction and the problem. It is the methodology of forcing people to come along the road with this cause. And if you change the methodology, you might well bring more people with you. Do you accept that? No, I don't, because what he's actually saying is he's contradicting what has happened in protest movements over the centuries. What has happened... Tell me one movement that's involved systematic wrecking of things that British people enjoy doing. I think, I think the, if you take a step back and you look at the protests that today have stopped all of them, there have been minor things. It, 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 it but they're not the minor, today. though. They are. Ten, ten minutes with a bit of dust is, is, is minor. However, the, the really interesting thing about today's protest is what it brought attention to in the media. The media this afternoon is talking about who is sponsoring the cricket match today. It's JP Morgan. JP Morgan is the world's largest funder of fossil fuel destruction. I've not heard anybody Which talking about in, JP it's, Morgan. It's in the BBC, it's no, in the Guardian. Honestly, I was, at Lords, I was at Lords until six o'clock. Nobody Nothing. was talking about JP Morgan or any involvement they may it have in fossil fuels. in the media fuels. today. It's Honestly, I've not seen read a word. The, read the reports in the BBC. Read the reports in the Guardian. Nothing. What they're, what they're talking about is JP Morgan is the world's largest bank. £454 billion pounds invested in fossil fuels since Paris. And they're sponsoring today. So I think it's a really important... Well, it reminds, so again, me, again, it reminds me of the rugby protest again, again, during the apartheid again, era. Again, That's the same reaction. Again. And people like you reacted to so the rugby people protest. People like me. No, you, no, I mean, I mean... You just don't know anything about what I, I thought mean, about those like protests. you who are responding to this protest no, are responding here's, to the here's same my way point. to the rugby protest. I would have people like you on to debate the serious issues. Absolutely. We do that every night on this show. We have a lot of... We had a very serious debate last night about racism in Britain, for example. The people involved in that debate haven't spent the last few months running around wrecking everything. They're not a wrecking machine. 
They want to have a debate which actually leads to proper change. That's what I would like to well, see with your calls. But just stop, just stop Oil. Everyone now associates Just Stop Oil with just a bunch of morons well, but, wrecking people's well, that, that, lives. That's what people like you call them. I would actually call them heroes because... The, What's heroic about because running on a cricket same, pitch exact same, and chucking orange paint around? The same thing around. was said about the rugby protests and the apartheid era. Let's, what, let's remember what's happening with the cricket world. You talk about the sacredness of the sport and the sacredness of the cricket pitch. Look at the cricket world world. Caribbean destroyed by hurricanes, Pakistan destroyed by floods, India extreme heat. What those cricketers are doing today is taking their side on the wrong side. They're, Hang on. Well, they're you're saying, on the wrong you're side. Saying the by... cricketers should have, should have stood, stood up and stood up beside the Just Stop Oil. Oh, they're don't saying, be ridiculous. No funding for new fossil fuels. Darryl, this is where you lose me. This is, there's a serious debate to yes. be had about what's been going on in the worst countries. I get it. I believe climate change is real. I believe it's dangerous. I believe in the core inherent essence of your protests, right? I just hate the methodology. And so, I can tell you, do 99% of this country. And they can, can't stand and it. And I can say back to you, I have been involved in this for 30 years. I spent 10 years local campaigning, 10 years in politics, Deputy Chair of the Liberal Democrats, yeah. I've done camp campaigning, I've done petitions, I've done marches. And now you're reduced to chucking paint around. No, I haven't chucked paint around. But well, I'm you're actually, supporting them. I'm actually supporting because nothing else has worked. So please tell me, we've tried politics. Actually, you say politics. nothing else has worked. What, what can work? The UK has one of the best records in the world no. in measures to combat climate change. It's not true. That is an irrefutable fact. And if you deny that, you are actually denying the very thing that you accuse other people of doing, no. which is reality. There are two things. Britain is better than the world in, 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 in most countries in reducing the carbon emissions of our electricity system. Everything else were disastrous. And the most important thing about Britain, which links to today's protest and JP Morgan Bank, is we're one of the largest funders of new fossil fuels so globally. Why don't, OK, question for you. Why don't, you, that. why don't you go to China and India and Russia and pull these stunts there? Why is it only the safe places like the UK that just stop oil chuck this stuff around at major sporting events and things that people love. Let me tell you why. Because there's a moral cowardice at the heart of what you do. It's a bit like Greta no, Thunberg. Doesn't take it. Greta Thunberg, you never see her in it's Beijing do that. ranting away about the Chinese government. It's not Even though the that. worst polluters in the world are the Chinese. So the people causing the real damage on pollution, none of your protesters mm. have the gumption <clears throat> or the moral guts to go and wreck the lives of those people in those countries because you know what would happen. Uh, and you pick <clears> on <throat> the easy places who are doing the most to try and combat it. Hang on, And in the process, you, you piss off I the entire the, country. I, mean, I don't I, get the I strategy. Mean, do you accept the point that Britain is responsible for 15% of new funding of fossil fuels globally? And secondly, we're responsible for over 50% of the insurance I'll tell you what I do fossil fuels. Is what that do. true or not? Here's what I accept. Do you accept that's true? Here's what I accept. I'm not going to quibble individual stats because I haven't got no, the information. really important stats. No, hang on. I haven't got that information in okay, front of cool. me. What I would That's say it. is, as a broad brushstroke, it is undeniable that the UK is doing more than most countries in the world who are acute, of the prosperous countries, is doing more to combat climate change than most others. That is a fact. What I'm agreeing with you is that we're doing more on our electricity, our own 1%, but... The City of London and our oil corporations are funding 50% well, Donna, here's my advice. of global emissions. Here's my advice. So we have to protest. Here's my Britain. advice. No, you don't. It's come, a centre of the Donna, fossil fuel come on, show, come on shows like this and make your argument. And then, and don't invite, go and wreck people's lives. But can lives. you please invite us on with uh, Morgan and Barclays and Shell? And All right, let me go to the place. final word to, to Sir you. Geoffrey Boycott, yeah, if you're still there, Geoffrey. Um, I want to lighten the load, Geoffrey, and just ask you, are we going to win the Ashes? <laughs> no. I really? don't think so. I think we should have won. We should have won at Edgbaston. We win the game for 90 percent of the time, yet we lost it. That's silly. That is silly, and that's that's enough to cry. You know, when you're winning a game 90 percent of the time and you lose, Australia is a good team. All we right, here's, here's what I'm going to gonna do, today. Jeffrey. Move will you around. accept? Will you accept a 100 pound bet? Because I say England will win the Ashes. <laughs> I only bet when I'm batting. <laughs> <laughs> so, Geoffrey, it's a great honour and pleasure to have you on the uh, show. I think it's your first appearance on Piers Morgan Uncensored. Please come back again. I miss you on the airwaves. Still a legend, still as sharp as Correct. ever. Great to see you. And thank you to my two uh, Just Stop Oil uh, contributors.